says recording will start soon. Okay. All right. Hi again, everyone. Um, my name is Chantal Martino. I am the 2020-2021 student board member, and I'd like to welcome all of you to the student board member informational meeting. Um, today, I'm going to be speaking about the roles and responsibilities a student board member has, as well as the requirements for running and how the whole application process is going to go. So if you all have any questions for me at the end, feel free to ask. And without further ado, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So again, <laughs> this is probably my third time saying it, but my name is Chantel. Um, I'm a senior at RMEO High School. This is my first and my only year as student board member. As student board member, I've been involved in little different subcommittees throughout the district. The main one is the Student Advisory Council, which is what I chair and what I'm in charge of running. And I've also been involved in the Governance Subcommittee, the Student Seal of Civic Engagement Committee, LCAP Advisory Committee, and I've been to some of the superintendent's student leader committee meetings. So that's just some of my involvement within the district. And so maybe a lot of you are asking, what does a student board member do? What are their roles, their responsibilities? Well, a student board member represents all students of FSUSD. So that's elementary, middle, and high school. So you're speaking on behalf of the entire over 20,000 uh, amount of students within the district. So your main role as student board member is two things. Uh, the first one is to be a part of the governing board. So governing board meetings happen around twice per month. You're expected to be there at around or at 6 p.m. Um, to sit on the governing board, sit on the days, and then provide a pre preferential vote or any input on any agenda items. Um, it's a little bit different this year since we are distance learning or we're in hybrid right now, but we have also offered the option to join through Google Meet. And so I don't know if it'll be the same next year, but that's how it's been this year. You can either go in person or you can sit at home and join from there. But just to add on a little bit, so you can provide preferential votes on agenda items. An example of an agenda item is deciding what tier we were gonna go back to school. So whether that was like red, yellow, purple, um, that was an example of an agenda item that you as a student board member can vote on preferentially. And so you can also provide input on different topics or different agenda items that the board is presenting that night. Um, there's a program called Board Docs and you basically have access to all of the agenda items that are going to be uh, spoke about that night. And then you're also supposed to provide a report on what you're doing as student board member to the board. So my reports have gone from one to four minutes. It really depends on how much you have to say. But in these reports to the governing board, you would basically speak about what you've been doing as student board member, your involvement, or maybe what you've done within student advisory council, all of the initiatives that you're taking, um, or maybe what you've observed uh, from other campuses or your own, uh, basically that. But you want to be more holistic in that you speak for the entire district rather than just your school. And so the State Advisory Council, like what I mentioned earlier, is what you're leading. So the Student Advisory Council is composed of students from different schools and grade levels. So anybody within the district can join regardless of what grade level, whatever school you go to, as long as you're part of the FSUSD. And so during these meetings, we do a lot of planning and as well as practice for board presentations, which I'll go into more later. But um, it really depends on what you put on the agenda for that meeting. So it's really flexible in that what you decide to put on the agenda, that's what what you guys will be going through during that day. So um, the projects may be your own projects, what you've decided to do within the Student Advisory Council, or they can be projects that come from the outside, such as the city of Fairfield, they came in um, the other month to speak about their project, Fairfield Forward 2050 with us. So it can be 
any of those things. Um, currently, we're meeting every third Wednesday of the month from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Um, usually, I know Student Advisory Council usually meets, I think, either at the district office or they can meet at different school sites on a rotation every month. But this year, we've decided to go completely remote. So every Student Advisory Council meeting has been online. And I believe our next meeting is going to be on April 21st, so next week from 3.30, 4.30. So if you want to come, if you want to observe, or if you want to join Student Advisory Council and get a feel for what we're doing, um, just let me know and we can send you an invite. And also, these meeting dates, they may change next year. It's completely up to uh, what is planned next year, but this is what the date and the time is for this year. And also, Student Advisory Council is responsible for providing three student voice presentations to the board each year. Unfortunately, we were only able to do two this year, and they were online. But usually, Student Advisory Council, or however many students it comes around to, 10 to 12 students, it really depends, will come to the governing board, and they would provide a presentation on the initiatives that they're pursuing or doing in Student Advisory Council. And so, um, it's, it, it's just, it just like, for example, right now we're talking about mental health and it's we're, what we're focusing on. We're having a mental health awareness month. And so our next presentation to the board is going to be about what we've done during that mental health awareness month and, um, the initiatives that we're taking. So that's that. <laughs> I know that was a lot. So if any of you have questions at the end, feel free to ask. Next, I want to talk about the Student Advisory Council positions. So like I said, the student board member is the chair. And so they plan the agendas for the Student Advisory Council meeting. And you'll also be working closely with the Director of Secondary Education, which is Mrs. Witt. She's in here right now. Um, you'll be working very closely with her to plan all of the agendas and the initiatives that you want to pursue as a student board member. She is going to be your rock. So. <laughs> build that relationship with her. She's been really great this year. And so that's what the student board member does as chair. And then we also have the student board member alternate. So the student board member alternate fills in for the student board member if they're absent in either student advisory council or governing board meetings. So if the student, the student board member has an agenda planned or if they have a report planned and they're unable to attend for whatever reason, then the student board member alternate can fill in and basically do what they were planning on doing for that meeting. <laughs> and then we also have the secretary, which takes notes of what happens during each student advisory council meeting. And so these notes are very beneficial because in case we want to go back to something that we talked about or discussed during the meeting, um, we can always go back to what the secretary wrote. And so that's what the secretary does. Right now, our secretary is Mashika Marema. Uh, he's not here right now, but he's been really great this year <laughs> as well. And also our student board member alternate, which is Jacob Francisco. He's been really great this year as well. Okay, so now I want to talk about the requirements for running. So to run for student board member, which is chair of student advisory council, the main position, um, you have to be an incoming high school senior. So if you're a junior right now, then you can run. You don't have to be part of student advisory council or you don't need to be recommended by a principal or activities director, teacher, anything like that. As long as you're a senior or a junior that's going into your senior year, that's part of FSUSD, you can run for student board member. But if you're a current sophomore who's going to be an incoming junior next year, you can run for student board member alternate, which is the fill-in for student board member like I mentioned earlier. And so applications are due May 6th, and you would submit your application to the following emails, which are mine, Mrs. Witt, and Ms. Bullman. And so that, now I want to talk about the election process. So there's going to be four components this year. The first component is your application. So the application is going to consist of a biography about yourself and your involvement inside and outside of school. So whether you are in any clubs, if you're doing community service, sports, things like that. And then there's also going to be 
a number of short answer questions for you to respond to. And I don't have those short answer questions on me right now, but they are going to be on the application. Um, and they are on the application, which is available right now. And then you will also need two letters of recommendation from either a teacher, an activities director, a principal, things like that. And then the next thing is a speech. So you will then provide a three minute speech to SAC and all students in FSUSD about your goals as student board member. So this will be a live speech. It's not going to be a recorded speech. We may record with your consent, we may record during your live speech to SAC, but in th this speech, you will want to talk about your goals as student board member. So just a little tip, we would much rather prefer to hear about your goals as student board members. Since you only have three minutes, we want to hear about what you want to do with the program and the change that you want to make within State Advisory Council and within the district. We already know what your involvement inside and outside of school is because you put that on your application. So we would much rather hear about your goals. So please try to focus on that. that that's just my advice though. <laughs> But after that speech, you will then be interviewed by a panel from SAC, and they will ask you a series of questions. And that will also be um, after your speech. And then after that, members of SAC will vote on who they would like to serve as a student board member. So students from the district may also gain the opportunity to vote, um, not, but as of right now, it's just SAC members who can vote on who would they like to serve as student board member. However, your speeches, we intend to send that to the entire district for everyone to see. And so that's that. Um, again, the application deadline is on Thursday, May 6, 2021. So be sure to get your applications in by then. So, Again, you can contact us through our Instagram, which is at FSUSD underscore SAC. And then it's the same thing for our Twitter. You can also email us at SAC at FSUSD.org. But if you have any questions, like general questions, or you know questions for me about my experience as a student board member, you can always reach me at my email. I put it there. And then I also put Mrs. Witt's email and Ms. Bullman's email. So now I'd like to open it up to questions if anyone has them. I had a question on your experience this year online. So now like we like know that anything could happen like at any like given moment. So I just wanted to um, ask you like how it was online, like how, um, how were like the meetings and the attendance and how were like giving back reports with like um, not as much as you would normally do in person? Okay, thank you. So we actually had an increase in students this year. We went from 13 members in SAC to now we have around 30 to 40 that attend each meeting. So um, that's been really good. Um, it's been a mix of students from different schools, but in terms of what we've done, we've really tried to adapt to this distance learning setting and creating or giving more opportunities to students so that they can feel comfortable in the distance learning setting that they were in previously, like for the most part of the year. So we've done things such as tutoring. Um, we're trying to implement that right now. So we've been training uh, students from SAC to become peer tutors. And like right now we're doing this mental health awareness month and we're having guest speakers come in every Friday uh, to speak about certain topics surrounding mental health. So really we've been trying to focus our initiatives more on things that are that we're able to do online. So next year it may be different since who knows the district may be in person like completely next year, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm not quite sure about that, but <laughs> um, yeah, that's what we've done this year. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. If, um, anyone can join um, SAC, the student advice. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dean asked, what's the biggest impact you feel you've had? 
Well, I think the biggest impact I feel that I've had is really fostering growth in not only throughout the district as a whole, but really fostering growth within the members of Student Advisory Council. Um, I feel like even though we're just online this year, I feel like I've been able to create a connection and a bond with all of these members. Um, even though we haven't physically seen each other, I think the, the biggest impact I feel that I've had is helping them grow to be leaders um, so that I'm, I'm not the only leader in this district. All of you are leaders. And I think my impact to help you all grow um, to create a change in our district. I think that's the biggest impact that I've had this year. Um, so I wanted to ask, is there like a problem that's like an ongoing problem that um, we have in the district that we haven't solved yet? Um, so. Sorry, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, ongoing pr problem. Um, that's a very broad question. Um, I think I wouldn't really consider mental health as a problem, but I think mental health is a topic that's very important and is something that is going to last like forever. And so we need to provide the resources that the students need to be able to succeed in this learning environment, whether it's at home or at school. So um, I think that's an ongoing, not really an ongoing problem, but something that we need to bring attention to. And so that's why uh, the district offers a lot of resources, but we as Student Advisory Council want to be able to promote those resources and provide more resources to students so that they can feel comfortable and safe and feel more positive in whatever learning environment that they're in. Chantal, can I add a piece too? And Trisha, you were on Student Advisory Council before, were you not? I still yes, have the slack that you gave me. Don't yes, I remembered you. So good to see you again. Um, something that I think continues, and it was even, it, it came up when you were on Student Advisory Council, and I, I don't feel that we have really solved it yet, right? Is um, the outcomes for students. We still have a large number of our students in our district that are, you know, not doing well academically, that are either failing their classes or, or not making progress, or that we end up not graduating at the end of high school. And so that I would say would be something that's an ongoing problem that we still need to really get to the root of and address so that we can ensure that every student in our district is making growth each year and, and being successful, right? And, and truly getting to that pinnacle at the end of high school to be able to graduate. And so that's something that I know when you were on the council, it came up about engagement and what was happening in the classroom. So I think that's still ongoing. Do you guys have the statistics for the graduation rates? Because I remember when, we did a presentation, we had it. Did it go down? Did it change in any way? It's gone up a little bit, except the, the most recent results from last year to the year prior were static. Like we, we did not see growth. Um, from the year prior. And that, you know, was our first year. Obviously, we were in distance learning. We ended the year in distance learning. It was also the year that there was a little bit more grace given in terms of grades, you know, where students were, you know, they, they hit a certain point and they could get better, but they couldn't go down. We also modified our graduation requirements last year. And even with that, we didn't see a, a bump in our graduation rate. So if we hadn't done that, potentially it, it would have even been worse last year. So we do have the results where it was really pretty static from the year prior. And obviously we don't have the results yet for this school year. Going off on what you said, is there like a reason why the graduation rates are going down? Is it like they can't afford the school or is there like, do you guys know a reason? Is there like a root of the problem or? I mean, it, it's different for each student, right? But the main reason a student's not going to graduate is because they haven't met the graduation requirements. And so we have the credit requirements, right, of the 230. And within those credit requirements, there are specific courses that you have to pass within that. And so there's a variety of reasons why a student may not end up meeting all of those requirements by the end of their senior year. But the fact that we have such large numbers that aren't, um, it's really something that we still need to really get to the root of, right, um, to ensure that, that we improve that each year.
Um, I think this year, like we started using all these online resources and we really took advantage of like social media, Google Meets, etc. So do you think next year we can continue to use those um, resources? Like maybe I know that you said attendance like raised a lot now that it's virtual and everyone like doesn't have to transport to one location um, that they might not be able to get to. And um and social media as well. Do you think we can continue that next year? That's a great question, Larisha. And I think honestly that we need to capitalize on the things that we have learned during this pandemic that are working well and continue those, right? So if we have learned from this and Chantel has done a phenomenal job this year leading in this virtual setting, she was interviewed and selected for her position virtually and then led all year where we have never, none of us have been in the same room together. And yet, yeah, she's done a lot with her initiatives this year. And I think it has been a very successful format for that because students can join wherever they are. And, and just yesterday we had a meeting and, you know, one student was in his car, you know, his parents were driving, but he was logged on on his phone. And so I think it allows more access for students when we open it up this way and that people don't have to worry about transportation. So absolutely, we could continue this platform for next year. That sounds great. Thank you. Um, sorry for asking so many questions, but um, are there any projects that you plan on expanding or continuing next year? Like any project that you guys are working on now that you want to see expand or implement in schools? Yeah, so actually, um, we started tutoring this year. We still haven't been able to fully implement that. Um, so we would, I would really appreciate it. I'm sure a lot of students would appreciate it as well if we expanded on that next year. And in the board presentation that we're going to have next Thursday um, for our Mental Health Awareness Month, there are some things that we weren't able to implement yet, such as support groups, um, Google Meet support groups for students to come and talk you know, about their mental health, as well as I think, I think uh, they were more videos. Like uh, I know Daniela, she's in here. She made a time management video, um, but more videos that focus on wellness and self-care. Uh, we'd like to implement that. And I think there's another one that I'm missing. Um, I can't quite remember what it was. Does, <laughs> does anyone that's doing the board presentation remember what the other one was? I think it was more, I think it was more um, guest speakers to come in. Um, Mashika mentioned, I think, having guest speakers talk about mental health during assemblies in school. So that was another idea that we were hoping to have implemented next year. And also, um, it would also probably be nice if we could have more contact with other school sites. Um, we don't have every school site on Student Advisory Council, so maybe if we could have at least one representative from each school to come in, um, that would be really, really great. To be on Student Advisory Council, is it a, a commitment that you have to go to every meeting or can students join like in between, um, like when they can? Um, no, it does not have to be a commitment. Um, students can join when they can. But we would really appreciate having students come in uh, continuously. That'd be really great. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I understand. <laughs> um, so how do you join the student advisory council? Because I joined because my teacher, like he told me about it, but I don't know how to like I haven't joined like the past three years because like I didn't know how to join it or I didn't know where it was. Cause I think that's a problem with like students is that we don't know where how to join or where it's located because I like looked at the website, I like looked everywhere, but I, I still don't know how to like join. So I think that's a problem that not only that the the student advisory council has, but like every single like within the district. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I totally agree. Um, this year we've been trying to utilize social media um, to have students join, but usually at the beginning of every month, um, we have an interest form for students to fill out and then we would just send them the Google Meet invite if they filled out that form. But since 
uh, it's been more stagnant right now. Uh, we haven't really had that interest form. That was that was more like so in the beginning of the school year or like the first semester. But to join Student Advisory Council, all you have to do is get in contact with the Student Advisory Council. And we've been trying to use social media to promote that so that students are aware of it. And I know sometimes emails, students can be flooded with emails so they miss out on it. But perhaps um, working with all the school sites to promote Student Advisory Council um, can really benefit students who would like to join because then they can learn more about it through their teachers or through their principals or maybe um, their school's leadership program, things like that. But right now to join, you just email. <laughs> Is it too late to join? No, or? no, you can okay. still join. <laughs> yeah, and I think getting in contact with the leadership class and and um, the the school's website, I think it'd be a good idea because most of the news that I come from, and I'm in leadership and so is Larisha, and most of like the events is, we're the ones that spread it and it's very successful, successful because we use social media. So I think that would be really good. Out of curiosity, what was it that, how did the two of you then find out about today? So was it the social media post or how did you find out? I saw the story about it and then I emailed Chantel and Jacob about it. And yeah, it was a story that eventually, like that, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I saw it on social media. That's good. That means their social media piece worked. So that's good. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> it can be anything you can ask about my experience <laughs> in the Student Advisory Council or as a board member or any general questions also. If there was something that I said in the presentation that you didn't quite catch. Is there a way that we could like shadow you guys or like, cause you guys talked about it very broadly, but like, like to see what it's to, to like, to, oh my God, what am I saying? Um, <laughs> okay. Um, is there a way like I could shadow you or like go in like a student advisory meeting and just like see what you guys do just, just so I know what it's like to be, become a board member? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I'll put the date of our next Student Advisory Council meeting in the chat. And then here's the time. Chantel, something that you've done really well, and I don't know if you spoke to this or not, but she, she plans the Student Advisory Council meetings really well. Like they're very well thought out from the beginning to the end. And she always has a very clear agenda and she has her Google slide deck put together. So Chantel, I'm curious, how much time does it take you to do that, to do the planning and mapping it out and putting it together? I think I do a little bit of it, like not every day, but um, cumulative maybe. I would say around an hour or two, but that's on a that's on a less busy day. If it's more busy and that I have a lot of like things to do for the district, like I said earlier, I was I was or I'm a part of a lot of the little different committees throughout the district. Um, to plan student board member stuff, um, it takes a lot of I would say working with Mrs. Witt and you know, like I said, it takes a you have to, it's nice to work with Mrs. Witt because communication is very important. So sometimes um, I would meet with Mrs. Witt and Mrs. or Ms. Sanders, um, not monthly, but I would meet with them often to discuss like the certain initiative that I'd like to take. But just for the agendas and the presentations, I would say an hour or two in total. When you give your reports to the governing board, do you usually get back feedback that you need to like take into account? Um, not really, <laughs> no. But 
yeah, mostly in my reports, I just speak on what I've been doing or what Student Advisory Council has been doing. So it's just kind of like a little update. Like, here's what we're doing. Nice. This is what we want to do. Our next meeting is so-and-so. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. And so a nice thing that she does, too, prior to the board meeting that night, she'll email myself and the superintendent and let us know what she's going to be talking about. So if we had any questions or if there was anything like we wanted to add to say, oh, make sure you also, you know, include something about this, there's that opportunity. So it's, it's nice that she does that as well. Anyone else have any other questions? And oh yeah, to join the Student Advisory Council meeting, um, if you could please email me and then Mrs. Witt and Mrs. Bowman so that we can add you all to the invite. That'd be great. If you're not already on the invite, if that is. And then also I wanted to mention, I know Trisha was talking about shadowing. Um, as for governing board meetings, governing board meetings are, um, they're broadcasted live on YouTube. So I usually speak, I speak on the, like near the beginning of the meeting, I would say around 6.30, that's when I provide my reports. But you can always go back on older meetings and like the ones that are already recorded and just scroll and then listen to me provide my report. So if you ever want to see what that looks like, then you can check out the, I think the YouTube channel is FSUSD broadcasting <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure it might be it yeah I'll, I'll get it real quick off the link off of our website and i'll put it in the chat for you guys um if you want i can bring it up in my leadership class so we can make posters about it if you guys want but i don't know if it's a little too late i can bring it up to mr levenger and one of our commission leaders will i mean larisha's and i will like talk on it in the on behalf of the leadership class if you guys are interested in that just like email us the information then We'll make the posters for you guys and share it around. I think they have flyers. Maybe we can use those, like, and put it into our Google Classroom and, like, yeah, people, like share it. And around. then RHS Mustangs, yeah, yeah, that would work. I think a lot of Rod students would really like to be a part of Student Advisory Council, but they just don't know how to be a part of the residents. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> Is that we're still thinking or no? <laughs> I think you're getting no's. There's no more questions. That okay. Like. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, if you all have any other questions, um, you can email me or you can DM the Instagram account or I can also provide my personal Instagram account maybe after Ms. Mrs. Witt ends recording because I don't really want to <laughs> share that with the entire district. But yes, 